This instructional video is about graphing exponential functions. Uh, this one is using the natural base E. And there are some of the questions that has to be answered. Well, first of all, what is a natural base E? Well, the natural base E, or the number E, it is part of a real number system. Uh, just like a pi is like approximately 3.14. You learned to use that a long time ago. Well, E is also an irrational number, which approximates into being 2.718. Sometimes we call it the Euler's number. Okay, And we could talk more about the number E later on, but right now I don't really get to how to use it in graphing an exponential function. Okay, In order to get this started, let's first understand the general natural base exponential function. It's called natural base exponential function. And that is written as f of x, or sometimes we write it as y, is equal to the coefficient a times the number e raised to the r is a coefficient of the x exponent. Okay? And there's some things you have to remember about this function where if the coefficient a, if that is greater than zero, positive that is, and the coefficient r of the exponent x is greater than zero or positive, then this function will be known as exponential growth. And we talked about that. Okay? And also, if the coefficient a is greater than zero, but this time the r is negative, less than zero. Okay? And of course, as you expect, this will be known as the decay function. Okay, so let's get right down to it. Here's an example, y is equal to one-third times the e raised to 0.5x. Can you tell right away if this is going to be a growth, exponential growth or exponential decay function? Yeah! You said the r, the, the coefficient from the x is positive, so it must be exponential growth. And that is correct. Okay, so in order to start graphing, let's go ahead and start determining some coordinate points. It's always start, it's good to start with the letting x equals zero. Because if x is zero, zero times the coefficient 0.5 is still zero. And any number, even irrational number, like number e, raised to a zero power, is still one. So the coefficient one third times one is one third. So that's one of our coordinate points. So if I start applying that, if x is 0, then y is going to be 1 third. So if I say this is 1, then 1 third is somewhere over here. Okay? So there's 0 and 1 third. So now let's let, let x equal 1. So what will happen? Now remember I said e is approximately 2.718. It's kind of getting ugly, isn't it? And guess what's the best way to evaluate when x is equal to 1? <laughs> yep, you got it. Break out the old calculator. And that's what we will do. Let's power this on. Okay. This time I got on the calculator or math mode. And let's punch it in. Let's have in parentheses 1 divided by 3 close parentheses times I got mine shift is over here as e to the x power e raised to 0 0.5, 0 0.5 times 1. So let's see what happens. I get 0.5495. So if I round it up, it becomes 0 0.55. Okay? So it's 0 0.55. Okay? So when it was a 0, it's 1 third. So when it's 1, it goes a little higher to 0.55. And what if I said if, it was, if x was 2 then? Just to give us a better idea, is, it, is this going to go up at all? So let's punch that in. Same thing, okay? So parentheses, 1 divided by 3, close parentheses, times e raised to, well, 2 times 0.5. If you have half of $2, that's like saying 1. So there it is. So you get 0.906. Yeah. 
it's and there fun. it is it should look something like hopefully going up soon okay and the asymptote is when y is equal to zero it's getting closer and closer to zero it'll be slower than before but it is getting there and that's how you graph this exponential growth function dealing with the natural base e okay now why don't you try this guy okay so you said hey move that thing over so I could see yeah let me move this guy so in order to graph this one oh before we start you said oh wait a minute this R this time it's negative does that mean since R is less than zero is known as decay this is actually a decay exponential decay yes it is so let's see what that would look like first let's let x equals zero to find what the coordinate should be. If x is zero, zero times the x, coefficient negative two is zero, and any number, even e raised to a zero becomes one. So all that left is the coefficient one half. So that was a good one. But what if we let x equal one this time? One time, oh, it's getting ugly. Break out the calculator again. Let's figure this one out. So this time we have, let's just go this way, 0.5, because that's one, one half is 0.5 times e raised to negative 2 times 1 or simply negative 2. So negative 2. That gives me 0 0.067 or 0 0.068 if I round it up. Okay? Now remember, this is 0 0.5. 0 0.5. So this is point zero six eight it is getting smaller and smaller and what if I went the other way what if I said it was negative one so negative two times negative one exponent would become two so that's like saying y is equal to one half e to the two and let's see what happens then let's punch that in so we got 0 0.5 times e to the second power Oh, it, could, it does get bigger if I go to the negative infinity. So that's 3.694 or 695. So we could plot those three points to give us an idea. So here's the x and y axes. Still we're living in a two-dimensional world here. If x is 0, then y is 1 half. If x is 1, it's getting smaller, okay? It's getting closer and closer to a zero. Let's just say over here somewhere. But if we go to negative infinity side this away, to negative infinity, suddenly it gets bigger on the y value. So one, two, three, four, three point six nine or three point seven is up here somewhere. And so your graph should look something like this. So like we anticipated in the beginning, it is an exponential decay function. <laughs> This thing is evil, I tell you. Ugh. Okay, where they were written as y is equal to a b raised to x minus h plus the k. Remember that? Where the, the inverse of the h tells you which way left or right to shift and the k told you which way up or down to shift from the initial graph that's what this is so let's get this started okay first of all look at the coefficient of the exponent x is that a positive yeah that means this is an exponential growth function uh-huh so here's how we do this one okay to get things started, let's just focus on the, the growth function, which is y is equal to 4 thirds times e to the x. Just that one, without the shifting component. Okay? And to look at the initial graph, we're going to let x equal 0. So anything raised to a 0, the entire term, including the e, will become 1. So the only thing that's going to become a y is the coefficient 4 over 3. Now, if we let x equal 1, the e, okay, oof, uh, back to the calculator, yeah, quickly. 
So we turn it on and we go in parentheses 4 divided by 3 times e raised to well the first power we set. So we go execute and we get 3.64 624. 3.624 and that kind of gives us a picture of what the exponential growth should look like. So here we go. So if x is 0, y is 1 and 1 third. Okay? 0 and 4 thirds. And if we let x equal 1, y is, wow, 3.6, more than 3.5. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So 3.6 is like approximately here somewhere. Okay? And that's 1 and 3.6, let's just say. And it's going to go up pretty fast. And initially, the asymptote is at when x or the y is equal to 0. It's getting closer and closer to 0, but never actually becoming it. But however, they will shift. They will adjust. So how do they adjust? Well, whatever the x value is here, 0, we're going to move right three spaces. So 1, 2, 3. Okay, so the new coordinate for the x here on this one is 3 instead of a 0. And we're going to go up one space. So from here, which was 4 thirds, now it's going to be 3 thirds, so it's going to be 7 thirds. So 3 and 7 thirds is the new coordinate of where this used to be. Same thing here. The x was 1, so we have to go 1, 2, 3, way over here which will leave our x to become 4. Okay? And it will use it was 3.6. Now we're going to go up to 4.6. Okay? So way over here instead. There it is. So 4.6. This one and this one. And the new asymptote is going to be at 1. Right here. y is equal to 1. And so our graph should look something like this. Look at that. Now it's getting closer and closer to a 1, but never actually becoming a 1. Okay? Now you try the tougher one. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to cheat. <laughs> I let you do the hard stuff, and I'm going to actually graph this guy to what it should look like. I will still graph the initial graph, but I want to see. So let's go back to the menu on this calculator. Go to graph mode. Execute clear off whatever this was. Now I'm going to punch in the function. One half, so let's make that 0.5 e shift e raised to hmm, this is a tricky one. Let's actually apply the distributor property to the entire thing. Okay, so here we go. So we got negative 2x negative 2 variable x plus 2 close parentheses and then minus the 2 execute and let's graph draw whoa so it's going down it is going down okay so I well and it looks like according to the graph the asymptote is going to be at negative 2 getting closer and closer to negative 2 but never becoming it but we still need to find the initial graph and to do that, we're going to only focus on y is equal to 1 half e to the negative 2. Not that part, just the 2x, the initial x. So, let's let x equal 0. And that means this whole term is going to become a 1, so it's just 1 half. And let's let x equal 1. Okay, so, hmm, I guess I need to go back to the menu and go into the math mode execute and let's figure that one out 0.5 times e raised to negative 2 execute that gives me 0 0.0676 so raised to 68 so it's getting smaller and smaller that's enough because I know what my final graph supposed to look like so if x is 0 y is 1 half right there and if x is 1, it's getting smaller to a, becoming a 0 and 0, so it's over here, let's say. 
Okay? I cannot resist. I wonder what negative one's gonna look like. So let's punch that in. Okay? 0.5 times e raised to negative two times negative one is two. It's gonna give me 3.6945. Okay? Did we already do this? This looks familiar. So 3.7. Let's just rough it up. Here we go. One, two, three, seven. Right here somewhere. So it's gonna go like this. This is the initial graph. Okay? Where the asymptote is when x is approaching, I mean the y is getting closer and closer to zero to a y. But now the shift is one and down two. So one and then one two. Okay, whatever this was, one. Okay, and where am I? One, two. Okay, and this, one, two. Oh, I already did that. And so, oh, and this one right here, whatever this was up here, one, and then one, two. So it should look something like this where the new asymptote is now y is equal to negative 2. <laughs> I hope this helps. We need to spend a lot more time in the classroom and this just a little preview of what's to come. Don't get scared kids. I'll see you then.